It is a little bit after 10 o'clock and I made it to the campground that I'm gonna camp at for tonight. Surprisingly, there's nobody else here besides me. So I have the whole campground to myself. I don't know. The goal was I was gonna roll up right at dark and go out to this little point right here and do some catfishing because catfish, they're a night fish. They're mostly active at night. And so the best time to target them and catch catfish is at night. But let me get some stuff situated. And depending on how I feel after that, we'll start talking about what I want to do for tonight. If not, then I'll just wake up tomorrow morning and try to fish for panfish or bass or whatever else is in this little inlet. The issue with trying to find your flashlights in the dark is that you don't have a flashlight to find your flashlights. Boom, there we go. Grab this other night light right here. So these things are pretty sweet. When you don't use them, you can just fold them like this. And then when you need them, just pop it open. Press this red button right here, turn it on, press it again, get a dimmer stage, press it another time, and then you get it at the front here, press it again, turn it off. So I have two right here and then I have my lantern so this is all I need we're gonna need our bucket of worms here I sure hope that these worms are still alive dirt looks moist they're alive drop this here put this here so I've just got a simple three-way rig here got my main line right here 10 pound mono tied to a swivel and then I also have 10 pound mono tied to a size 10 bait holder hook and then on the remaining eye of the swivel I just have a six pound fluorocarbon leader tied to a one ounce bank sinker weight. Find ourselves a piece of night crawler and hook them up toss them out. Realistically I would expect us to catch a bullhead catfish. I hear a bunch of fish jumping around over here and I think this is just a relatively shallow flat here so just cast it out we're not going to cast it out far I would assume that this little shallow flat here there's some catfish roaming around We're just gonna fish for maybe half an hour. If we don't get any hits, I'm just gonna go hit the sack and we'll fish here first thing, first light. Oh. I'm gonna pull my worm rod out really quick. I'm gonna throw this road runner towards where I'm hearing all these splashes and I'm hoping yeah, we can catch something. I don't know if they can see it, but if they can hit something in the top water right now, like that, I would assume they can hear my roadrunner or feel my roadrunner vibrating. Oh, I just got a hit. That's a bass right there. Okay, this might be a little easier than I thought. I'm going to put my light a little bit better facing the water that way these fish can see my uh, road runner a little bit better that was a small mouth probably like six inches oh there we go fish on <laughs> we actually caught a fish at night Nice smallie. That's what's up. We are going to keep these smallies because there's too many of them. We have a, what I deem is we have an issue with smallmouth. So all these guys right here, we're going to just keep them. And this guy engulfed it. You can't even see my Roadrunner. Just inside his mouth. This guy, he's bleeding because he kind of swallowed it. But again, we're going to 
keep him anyway, so we're not too concerned about kind of messing up his gills. This is called a Roadrunner. So it's a jig head with a blade on the bottom. And then I just have this little curly tail as my soft plastic. That's all I'm using. And I'm using a Roadrunner with that little blade on the bottom so that when I retrieve it, it makes a little bit more commotion so that even though it's nighttime, more fish can uh, get the attention towards my Roadrunner. Got a little chillier than I was expecting last night. Decided to rough it out in my truck without a sleeping bag. Survived. Didn't actually need a sleeping bag. Sun has not fully peaked out yet, so I guess you could say we kind of woke up on time. I'm hoping for a nice early morning bite. I know there's a lot of smallmouth in here, so I wouldn't mind a couple of smallmouth. Yeah, I'm getting tapped a whole bunch. Oh, oh my goodness. They're coming out under the dock. I'm just going to figure eight these fish. There's a bunch of turkeys gobbling over there. There's a lot of bass right under this dock. There's a bunch of turkeys up this little drainage. Come on. Oh, I just got a big hit. Oh, there we go. Bam. These are good smallmouth. Nice smallmouth. Should get some nice fillets off of that guy. I'm telling you guys, these smallmouth are so overpopulated. Into the bucket he goes. So this morning I switched over to this June bug color with a chartreuse tail. And I can tell these fish, they want these curly tails because when you reel these curly tails they give a lot more action versus just a regular tube or something oh I'm getting hit they're coming out from under the dock and just smashing bam right there all right this guy's just too small I like these road runners because they give off a lot more more action than just your typical jig head because you have two forms of action you have the little blade right here that's giving off action and you also have the tail of the soft plastic that's giving off action this guy will eat these are like the sizes that we need to call out. Not big, but that size of filet will do. Man, this morning, there's just so many animals just everywhere. We got turkeys up this drainage, 
We got a pheasant up here. We got coyotes yipping around. And of course, deer don't make much noise, but I'm sure they're up there if I looked. One of the reasons why I'm out here targeting smallmouth is because one, they're fun to fight or fun to catch. And two, they're good table fare. And three, there's just too many of them. Other fish like crappie can't compete with them. Oh, look, I was complaining about how there's no deer. There's a deer right there. Hey, hi there, buddy. Oh, there she goes. I do not know where I am headed now, but the fishing slowed down quite a bit. Not that it was great to begin with. There's a lot of tiny bass, like bass that size that constantly hit my lures on every cast, but they're just too small, so we're not gonna worry about them. So I'm just gonna drive down river and wherever it looks good, we'll just fish there and kind of just wing it. I don't really have any game plan. We're just out here to have fun and explore. So down river we go, try to find a different spot. Don't know why the campgrounds are so empty. It's, it's a Saturday. We'll see what this sign says. I think this is just a sign regarding pike northern pike yep stop this spread of northern pike never actually fished it before looks like a pretty rough boat launch but the thing with that is this looks good for fishing whenever you see shrubs that rub right against the water it's often a good spot to target fish. Just provides cover for fish to hide and then whenever they see a lure, they just come out and ambush it. Same thing with this side over here. So I think it's worth it to just throw the lure around. There's a lot of blackberries. This is a blackberry bush right here. Um, but they're pretty burnt out, wilted. fish picked it off the bottom smally nice not a bad one he's actually fighting really good I think we'll keep this one as our last bass for the trip. I think four bass, especially this size, is plenty. This guy's been grubbing. Look at that belly. Just another beautiful smallmouth bass. That's plenty of meat for me. So I'm gonna keep this guy as my last one. I'm gonna go toss him in the bucket. And I switched over to a micro Ned rig. So this is not a Ned rig. This is a micro Ned rig, a finesse. So a smaller version of a Ned rig. I believe this is a 1 24th ounce jig head. And then I have one of the smaller uh, Z-Man soft plastics on there. So I don't have my bucket with me. In the bucket he goes, we got four in there. So from here on out, just catch and release. They upsized their trash bags. I like that a lot. The other ones were just a little small. Keep some of this in my pocket. 
since it's not burning hot yet, I'm going to take advantage of this cool weather. And I'm going to process my four fish. I'm not going to eat them just yet. They're my lunch. And we're still in the breakfast hour. Get them all prepped. That way when I am ready to cook, I don't have to go through the process of actually starting from scratch. All right. I gently launch this into the water. Start with the smallest guy first. I do not have my fillet knife with me. So my good old pocket knife. Nothing crazy, we're just gonna fillet these fish. Just go behind their head here. Cut down to the spine. Follow along the spine here. And again, since we're using a pocket knife, this blade is very stiff. So it doesn't give me the flexibility that I need or I want to be able to go right up against the spine so we're just gonna do what we can here Well, that's pretty much it. This guy's pretty small, so there's not a lot to go off of this guy. Again, just filleted him. This is good catfish bait. So once you get your little fillet here, you still have the skin attached. So we're gonna take our knife and we're just gonna make a little slit here and go right in between the skin and the meat. And you the trick is you don't want to move your knife. You want to just hold your knife in the right angle and just pull the skin and wiggle it back and forth. That way it's a much cleaner cut and you don't risk pushing your blade through into the skin, which then makes your fillet job a lot harder. So there's a piece of baskin. Do the same thing to this side. And then that's pretty much the process that I'm going to do for the other three fish. Again, just get started with your blade. And then once you get enough skin off, just hold your knife in place. And again, this is a lot easier with a fillet knife where your blade's a lot bigger, but we're out here improvising. And just like that. Well, that don't look too shabby for four relatively small, smallmouth bass. Obviously got my larger fillets over here. The small little guys are these chunks right here. That should provide a relatively good lunch for me. So can't complain. Again, just filleted them and then skinned them. I'm gonna go and pat this dry, toss them in here, and then they'll be ready to cook later. One of the reasons why it's not as warm out as it should be is because if you look in the sky, that's just a lot of smoke. And when you have a lot of smoke cover like this, it just blocks out a lot of heat. Smoke kind of acts like shade in a way where sunlight just can't penetrate through. And so it's just not as hot as the weather forecast predicts it to be. So you can see that oddly bluish gray sky. That's just smoke. Just because we are in the middle of a bunch of wildfires right now so whenever you're out here recreating always you know be extra cautious whenever you're dealing with anything flammable
much pokey stuff. I have never seen so many sunflowers here before. Just covered right here. However, I am here for this tree and that tree right there. And these are the plum trees. And these things look very, very ripe. Maybe a little too ripe for my liking. So these are wild plums. This one looks a little bruised. I'll try to pick this red one. This red one's extra ripe. It's still got a good sour punch to it. Definitely a little sweeter than what I typically will like. So let's try for a slightly more yellow orange one. Oh, it might just be all too sour for my liking anyway. The internal like juice itself is not bad, but that skin is extra sour. I also don't think it's a very good idea to eat something sour for one of the first things you eat for the day. Maybe we should have done this after I ate lunch. That's one tree. I could tell people have been picking it. This one right here is galore. Oh my goodness, that scared me. Look at that spider. The spider was crawling on my hand. It's got a nest to protect. All right, let's be extra careful here and uh, try not to pick up a spider again. Let's try this bunch right here. And like I said, you can see these are all just very red. They're just not what I prefer. Normally, if you have a Ziploc bag, it's a lot easier to coat the fish. Well, I ain't got no Ziploc bag, so it's doing old school on a plate. Either way, same results. Coated fish. It's been a while since I've had fish fry, so I think this will hit the spot. And in fact, it's just been a while since I've had smallmouth bass in general. Smallmouth bass, they're just white meat fish. They're not red or pink like salmon or trout. So they're more similar to like crappie and bluegill. When it comes to bass, smallmouth bass is phenomenal. Largemouth bass, they're not really my favorite. I don't, I don't really consider largemouth bass to be good eating. Like they're not bad. Like I'll eat largemouth if I have to, but I never go out of my way to catch bass to, or largemouth bass to eat. But smallmouth bass, I will go out of my way to catch them, to cook them. You can always make a room. We're going back to the good old basics. 
But today we're going micro. So we've got small tortillas instead of the regular, like, I don't know, 10 inch by 10 inch diameter tortillas that I usually use. Let's do one filet there. We got some diced jalapenos right on top. Try to spread it around as best as I can here. Just got some onion. We got lettuce. Granted, the lettuce should go last because they always fall apart. Just a little bit of cheese, just like that. I am so hungry and I already know this is gonna be good. But first, let me say a prayer and we can chow down. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day that you have blessed me with an opportunity to come back out here to enjoy creation and to not only enjoy creation but to also catch fish thank you for all the fish that you've allowed me to catch uh, today for every good gift is from you right now i'm going to eat lunch and i just pray that you bless those whose hands were involved to put this food in front of me today lord and i pray for everyone watching this whatever anxiety they're going through lord i pray that you remind us all that you are in control we thank you we love you in jesus name i pray amen as the day has progressed, the smoke has gotten heavier. Right now I can literally taste the smoke. I can smell the smoke. I don't know if it's a good idea to be out here, but we're out here anyway. So very simple, small tortilla. Mm. Those jalapenos got a punch. They don't tell me how spicy the jalapenos are, but I guess jalapeno itself is a granted that it's gonna be somewhat spicy. I like it though, it's not too overwhelming. It's just got enough kick, but this hits the spot. You can never just go wrong with fish fry, you know? Throw in some seasoning like I did, garlic salt. Batter it up with the never failing Louisiana fish fry. I love this stuff so much. I went and bought a whole jug of the fish fry and this thing has lasted me years and I'm already halfway through it. This is smallmouth bass at its finest right here. I mean, just. This is the main reason why I needed a truck tailgate cooking. I didn't have to bring an extra table. I just throw everything on the tail of my uh, truck and then cook, throw everything back in, including garbage like that, and we can head out. 